different perspectives. One of the um, interesting perspectives is the use of the knowledge economy approach for the social inclusion of people with disabilities. Uh, it's interesting because I guess that um, this is a, a brand new approach. Uh, and secondly, because uh, thanks to this approach, the, uh, the institution in Sao Paulo, uh, Brazil, uh, the uh, State Secretary for the uh, Right of Person with Disabilities, has uh, embraced this concept and has launched um, a center, uh, it's called uh, CETI, Center of Excellence for the Social Inclusion in Technology, uh, Social Inclusion of People with Disability through Technology Innovation. And the focus of my uh, presentation today is actually uh, how to provide uh, an overview uh, of the opportunities and challenges presented by the knowledge economy and probably trying to uh, clear a little bit uh, the concept of knowledge economy because uh, I understand that uh, um, there are different definitions, a different uh, way of looking at knowledge economy as a concept. Uh, but in this particular presentation, we are uh, talking about the knowledge economy approach for the economic and social well-being of persons with disabilities. Uh, from now onwards, uh, they will be referred to as PWD. And then present a, a rational, or the rational, for the creation of a, a KE compliant, knowledge economy compliant center of excellence in technology innovation for the social inclusion of people with disability. Uh, the acronym is SECI. Within the um, the uh, secretary that I just mentioned to you in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Actually, uh, the state of Sao Paulo is uh, quite, um, um, let's say, pioneer in this in this field. So I would like to pay homage to the, uh, let's say, the uh, vision of the state minister, uh, Ms. Lina Mara Batisteva, uh, in having, a pro having embraced this, this approach. Now, um, here, uh, I would like to start with uh, um, uh, a kind of, um, it's not a poll, even though uh, the, 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 the way that uh, the webinar is referring to is a poll. I would like to ask the audience, um, how many of you have an understanding of uh, the knowledge economy? So, uh, organizer must close poll to enable screen sharing. Anna, are you in charge of this poll? Anna? Yes, I, I'm taking care of that for you. Okay, thank you. So this is a way to setting uh, a little bit the, the relationship between me and you, trying to uh, bridge the two parts of this virtual uh, communication. Uh, because I might have a perception of the knowledge economy that is different from what you have. So uh, I wanted to uh, see whether we are tuned on the same concept. It looks like we had 71% with some knowledge of knowledge economy and 29 with no knowledge of knowledge economy. Oh, that, that's good. Quite challenging. Thank you, Anna. So let's go ahead and try to uh, let's try to give a definition because a human being uh, always has a necessity to define things. Even though, in my experience, uh, I realize that the knowledge economy could be defined and applied differently. Even though there are certain items that characterize the concept of knowledge economy. Uh, the definition that I'm giving in this presentation is the one that is presented in this uh, slide, um, an interconnected globalized economy where, of course, knowledge, resources such as know-how, uh, expertise, skill um, are as critical as other economic resources such as land, natural resources, or even manpower that characterize the previous economies. Uh, it's, first of all, I would like to point out the knowledge economy is something we are living in today. It's not something that we have to uh, uh, shape or create. It's something that we are living and we're trying to uh, make it more rational in order to learn some, some uh, let's say, experience in trying to probably uh, distill some element that could be useful 
for uh, developing countries to use in their uh, national strategies. Uh, today, knowledge is, is recognized as a source of competitiveness, uh, where even more value lies in new ideas, services, and networks, and where ICT is an instrument and not an end in itself. I wanted to pause on this uh, particular concept uh, that highlighting ran because um, my original field of interest was ICT for development, information communication technology uh, for development. And actually, throughout my career, from the United Nations to uh, the IEDB to the private sector, uh, I focused my work onto the uh, concept of ICT for development. Uh, in the last probably uh, five years, there was uh, a, a wide interest, a broad interest uh, from the point of view of financiers, international financiers or, or development uh, banks like the one I was working with for the IADB or the World Bank in uh, uh, presenting uh, development through the lenses of ICT. And we were supposed to uh, uh, help um, developing countries to um, join this new revolution. But actually, uh, in my humble opinion, we failed uh, this uh, objective because uh, the projects that the, the different uh, financiers were financing were um, uh, more focusing on ICT as an end instead of being an instrument. That's why I highlight this concept on this slide. Well, uh, it's it's uh, it's a real uh, it's a very clear uh, truth that the the, uh, the technology and economic changes of the globalized world uh, offer great opportunity for developing economies and poverty reduction. There are um, tons and tons of studies on this, and uh, I believe that the KE has a pivotal role in propagating sustainable economic growth uh, through the promotion of exports, the improved uh, functioning of markets, and the efficiency of government services. Now here it's uh, it's a slide that is interesting uh, double fold because first of all uh, it's comparing um, two uh, um, regional powers uh, Brazil in uh, uh, Latin America and South Korea in um, East Asia. Uh, secondly, because uh, I know very well Brazil and uh, I recently uh, went to South Korea last week actually and I was impressed by uh, let's say the way that this country uh, uh, has come from and uh, is, uh, um, let's say, projecting itself in the future, um, the focusing on the concept of knowledge economy. Actually, is is one of the countries that um, has a ministry of knowledge economy, and the ministry of knowledge economy is uh, emerging together. Um, I'm just uh, quoting from uh, a presentation they, they gave to me. Uh, it's a seamless integrated composition of the former ministries of information communication technology and ministry of science technology and finance and economy. So it's a very powerful ministry. But it's also a, a, a very clear idea of how a, a, a country decides to go uh, in terms of uh, his uh, future development, the kind of investment that he wants to prioritize. And here this slide has as objective a way of uh, making clearer how uh, the difference in GDP uh, between uh, Brazil and Korea is due primarily uh, on one side to the difference result uh, due to capital and job increase uh, in Korea. On the other side, on the other hand, on uh, the difference result uh, uh, that this graph is, is presenting due to the accumulation of knowledge in Korea. Accumulation of knowledge local and uh, imported. So this is important to to in, in in the in the following slides you will see how and why it's important. But for me it's important because there is ground here for uh, forging a South-South cooperation uh, in this interesting uh, area of knowledge economy. As I said before, Korea was an early adapter of the KE. Four years ago, Korea and Brazil had the same GDP, and today Korea's GDP is 4.7 that of Brazil. Uh, Korea, on top of this, made huge investment in knowledge-based sectors and accumulating knowledge um, local and important, and developing skills and innovation. Now, this uh, lesson learned uh, is uh, what we are aiming to uh, 
use uh, to transfer to Brazil um, because, uh, in my opinion, proving the effective use of the knowledge potential Brazil um, holds a great promise for this country, uh, both for the social economic growth and development. Let me uh, pause here a little bit on uh, Korea again. Uh, Korea is an emerging center in Asia. Um, 61 cities with population of 1 million or more are located within three hours of Seoul. Uh, Tokyo is two hours, Shanghai is 1.4 hours, Hong Kong three hours, uh, Beijing 1.5 hours. So it's in hub um, in uh, center in, in, in Asia. And then, interesting enough, and probably to my, uh, uh, due to my lack of knowledge of the country, I was not aware of uh, where Korea is standing in the world. Uh, in terms of the industrial competitiveness, Korea is the number one, and I'm uh, quoting uh, figures of the 2008 provided by the Bank of Korea, number one in the construction of ironclad uh, vessels, um, number one in the construction of uh, uh, television, we are uh, quite aware of Samsung, number two for the cell phone, number three for uh, microchips, and number five for uh, cars. In terms of science technology, number seven in the world in terms of uh, R&D spending. In terms of economic strength, is the world 15 larger GDP and the world's number nine exporter. And this is a, a, a quite interesting uh, data, in, in, as far as the human resources are concerned, is the world number one in terms of proportion of population pursuing higher education. I, and I want to stress this point because we will see during our presentation that education is one of the pillars that, uh, uh, let's say, uh, is at the base of uh, a knowledge economy uh, approach. Again, in terms of, of, of definition, so far so we, we can, let's say, um, uh, define a little bit better uh, the concept of knowledge economy as a non-monetary value that society accrues from increased access to data, information, knowledge, using a solid ICT infrastructure. The, the action of capturing, quantifying the value represented by such a knowledge and introducing it as a factor in decision making is what knowledge economy is about. It's a new uh, paradigm uh, uh, in which we are looking at uh, in order to uh, make an intangible asset into a tangible one and uh, that the would uh, trigger a, a, a virtuous cycle that will lead eventually to a new economy. And that's what we refer to uh, to the uh, early adopters countries like, uh, as we said, Korea, in Europe was Finland, uh, and nowadays Brazil is, is, is catching up. Now, we have defined uh, the KE, um, but let's see how we can, let's say, uh, deploy uh, uh, a KE approach. And I put here in red uh, um, something highlighted like uh, uh, a concerted effort to capture, analyze, evaluate, and disseminate knowledge, institutional, cultural, indigenous. Now, knowledge is also something that we bring with us without knowing it. <laughs> I refer to the task of knowledge. It, 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 it's not very easy to um, externalize, to make it, uh, let's say, quantifiable what we know. But actually, throughout the, uh, our life, we are able to absorb uh, different knowledge, but we are less able to um, quantify it. Uh, we are even less able to um, uh, use this knowledge in order to uh, improve ourselves in, in the global market. So what we are trying to uh, um, present here is a recipe uh, for countries that want to join uh, the globalized economy on how to join uh, this uh, uh, new paradigm of development. Uh, the knowledge economy aims so far to make a knowledge a valuable instrument for economic development, fostering sustainable economic growth and reducing poverty while promoting excellence, innovation, and equity. Uh, 